We are finally at the last part of this tutorial in which I'll cover some advanced options and how to export your movie. Now let's take a look at a few advanced options. Perhaps you have recorded a long sequence in which someone is talking. That can be pretty boring. You can make it more interesting by showing what that speaker is talking about. How is that done? First, let's identify the clip to be modified. This clip in which I'm talking about how to determine the difference between mangrove species is a good one to work with. Look at some of the characteristics of the leaves and the reproductive structures to figure out which one it is. So as you heard, I'm explaining that by examining some morphological features, it's possible to identify what species of mangrove is growing in this particular stand. Let's look in the imported media files and find something that shows what I'm talking about. Here is a clip with a close-up of the developing fruit on one of the trees. We select a portion, a few seconds, and drag it into the timeline and drop it on top of that footage. If you look in the toolbar, you see there is an option to turn that added clip into a cutaway, a split screen, or a picture-in-picture. -picture. Also, if you film someone in front of a green screen, you could select that option. Let's see what a cutaway looks like. You can take a look at some of the characteristics of the leaves and the reproductive structures to figure out which one it is. What about split screen? Be sure the inserted clip is highlighted and then select split screen in the drop down list. We can take a look at some of the characteristics of the leaves. We can also change the relative position of the two clips here. Of the leaves and the reproductive structures. For the picture in picture, the second clip appears in a smaller window that can be resized and repositioned. We can take a look at some of the characteristics of the leaves and the reproductive structures. So as you see, there are a number of ways to use these advanced options to add visual interest to your movie project. But to be able to take advantage of these options, you need to have the extra footage. This means that you must spend some time at your filming location shooting as many different scenes and perspectives as you can. As you can see from the clips in my media browser, I spent a few hours getting that extra footage at this shooting location. When you finish editing, you want to preview your project full screen. To do this, place the playhead at the start and select View and then Play Full Screen. Once you are satisfied with your video, then you are ready to export. Go to File and Share. You will see several options. Or you can click this button. I'm going to select Save to File. We get a dialog box where we have a limited number of export options. Previous versions of iMovie had more encoding options using QuickTime. 
I guess those confused people, so it was simplified to this list of qualitative options. You can export both video and audio, or just the audio. You can change the resolution, for example, from 1080p to 720p, which will give you a smaller file. There are also a few options for quality. These relate to video bitrate, which you can see if you select Custom. You should select the bitrate recommended by your media sharing site for the resolution of your video. You can find these guidelines in the Help section of YouTube, for example. If you're uncertain, just select High or Medium Quality, keeping in mind that this will change the size of your file. You can also choose to send the video to the theater, which makes it available on all your devices. The last option is for compression, and your only two choices are to optimize for quality or for speed. Click Next, and we are prompted to name the file and select its destination. I'll send it to my desktop. Now that that's finished exporting, we can find the file on my desktop. And here's the file right here, and we can open it in QuickTime. From here, you can upload the video to a video sharing site or post it on your website. Well, that just about wraps it up. iMovie is a great application for non-professionals who need a user-friendly editing program to create the occasional video. This series of tutorials was designed to get the beginner familiar with the basics of movie editing and with some of the various options available in iMovie. If you would like to see the final version of my video about Yakushima mangroves, just click the link in the annotation or the text link below this tutorial. Music